Okay, so just for some context, uh, we just added a bunch of stuff. You can erase all that stuff from my meeting last night. We just added a bunch of stuff to the lineup of our what we offer in catering and combine that with some strategies we've done with paid ads on Facebook. We have completely changed our catering business. We had to get our own location for it. We've expanded the menu. We've brought on several people full time just to focus on it. And so what we're doing right now is just talking. Daniel is new in the position. He just took over as catering president. And so I've been so busy opening the stores and getting this place open and just all my normal duties as the owner. I've literally just thrown Daniel in and he's like been trying to swim in this whole new business that we we're creating. So anyways, this is one of the few times that we actually are syncing up on a game. <laughs> things. Anyways, that's all. Um, so ideas you're saying for the next couple weeks? Okay, just let's go main high, higher level topics you need to get done and we'll just rattle them off and then let's put them in a priority level and then assign them. Cool, so we need vans, vans or trucks. Yeah, we need to purchase the vehicle. Um, we need to wrap, get a wrap for them. Um, we need, we're, we're changing, so with the marketing, we are getting business cards and everything like that. All the marketing materials? Yeah, um, with that being said, I just got, that phone so we can now be eight to one soda bar. Uh, you got another up. phone? This was twenty bucks. This is simple. It was like and it's a track phone, so I just add minutes for ninety days where we transition to soda bar. Tanner, we got he got eight oh one soda bar <laughs> as the catering phone number. <laughs> so four soda bars, we are eight oh one soda bar. So business cards will now have that eight oh one soda bar. Um that's gonna be sick. I think so too. I, Should I, we put that on the wrap? I think we'll put that on the wrap. So what's the logistics behind that working? Um, Is that long term we can bet on it? So yeah, we can we can keep that number forever. Um, keep um, keep will get the number for us. We just have to change it and keep. So whenever we do that, it's officially ours and everything's good. Training, we're, yeah, we're, we're, we have that plan that's been Tonight's our first night actually going forward with it. That's physically training with people. <laughs> yeah, so those, so we already have done the onboarding trainials. I just have to finish posting just the last couple. I was gonna so, say, can you make another one for trainual? Yeah. Or a um, subset or something, whatever. Yeah, I'll, I'll so part of the, um, part of the thing, the plan is trainual um, first, then that makes them a help. In order to become a lead, they have to go to training, and then they have to do three shifts. Mm -hmm. They also can do two trainings, and that then they only have to go to like one or two shifts. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just how they get through to become a lead. Once they're a lead, then they can do trailer training, and they're lead plus. Training first one is today. Ellie's running that. Um, we'll see how that goes. Trainings have to get done. Okay. I listed a couple other things. Um, okay. but, How about, oh, I have to get the production kitchen all their orders. Okay, yeah, and then inventory system for uh, you, for catering. And right then, now we're just walking around and seeing what we need for the week. Let's just put let's just drop you into an inventory sheet. Okay, I'll, I can take that along, but then I can easily get you hooked up with how to explain that to Ellie, and then that's off your plate. Okay. And every Monday you just expect and have communicated that she'll get that done and I feel like well that's a first step in just getting the system rolling okay. one of them don't you think because you don't have to yeah. worry about it yeah I, yeah okay um how about how about trailer driving training? that's part of the, the, the part of training well, we have the trailer training that okay. can go out there submitting orders is that that's the production kitchen sorry I should have read that uh, and then how about, we just talked about doubling the leads. Want to put that on there? The what? Doubling the leads. Like the amount, the oh, the, I need to switch from leads for, because I always get confused with the leads of an event and the leads that we're bringing in. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I need to switch the leads for an event to like leaders. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, like, like uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Audrey. Yes. Yeah.
we're trying to double the amount of leads that we have for the rest of the quarter because we're trying to hit a goal of a million dollar catering business in 2021. Daniel, give them the update of where we're at, what we so, need to do. So basically we have it breaking down into what makes money. So first off, our goal for this quarter, quarter one, of course we're gonna be growing. Quarter one's always our slowest. It's January through uh, March and not a lot of events are happening. People are just getting done with the holidays. Um, April, May, June are when events are really happening. And then quarter three is our big one just because we're summer. Um, summer parties, things like that. So for this quarter, in order to get this amount of revenue, we need 650 leads. Right now we're about 180, um, but that's before we rolled out all of the new bars and are now going to be doubling the amount of ad spend. We're gonna be doubling the amount of content we have out there. Um, anyway, just so really break that down. So, so 15 or 16 today we have Half of the quarter left. We've yep. done how many? That was 180. 180. 650 minus 180 is not math. I can do 380. 380. No. 470. Four That's close enough. Okay. We need to do that, which is basically well more than double. So we should take if we're spending forty dollars a day on ads right now, or no, we're we spending so twenty it, or forty. It's, it's three times because you have to expect that just from the current ad spend, we'd get another 180. And then that means for the rest of the quarter, so that means we still need 290 additional. So it's a little bit less than triple the ad spend. Yeah. Because if we tripled it, we'd get 540 for the rest of the quarter. Yep. So let's say we need to hit, we need to hit 470. Yep. Um, we would need to go 180 times 2.5 basically. 180. Yep. So that's pretty easy, so yeah, that's exactly 450. So just about two and a half times the ad spend. So we're spending, is it 20 or 40? 20. We're spending then 20 you just a check. day. It might be 40. Let me check right now, because I think it's 20. We're spending, these ads we're getting in um, all come through Facebook lead forms. Just need to use the new content. Yeah, we basically all need to use these. Yeah, we use the new content that will. That's what I was just telling. And it's like it's already shown so many people that specific ad it can't show them again. So we're getting less leads. Yeah, true. Uh, we are spending twenty dollars a day, so we're going to spend fifty dollars a day. Yeah. And so my next question is, if we do that, are we going to have the infrastructure sales-wise to even back it up? Because we can book, look, we can book these <laughs> events and not be logistically ready and get ready. I know that's that's the nice what thing. Is, is it? Is do we? Are we going to spend the money, and get hot leads, and not be able to convert? There's no way. Because so, at the end of the day, the three of us would sit in here and call yes. leads if we had to. And same with Kenzie. I think Kenzie, we can move to full time, and we can hire someone else to do full time. What my next step for sales team is if we get enough wedding leads, we have a full time taste tester. So like yeah. someone who is doing full time, and just out that, that here or there. Yeah, we figure it out. Um, but that's that's down the road once we have the leads, and once we have the leads, we'll just stay on top of them. We'll we'll convert them. But if okay. it's not broke, don't fix it. Can we? So the expo is big. Bank account. Bank account is done. It's done. Yep. I dropped eight thousand dollars into it. Do I have a card for it? I need a card for it. Yeah, card. You can either have mine or Sierra's card for it. I'll probably just give you mine. Okay. Um, but the only thing I need to do is reroute the income from Square to it. I'm going to okay. do that this week. Cool. Reroute it. Put, just put bank account on there. All right. Now, before we end the meeting, let's prioritize it and break it down how we're going to get that. Just off the top of my head, to me, this is like very much in primary stage, first stage priority. Do you think? Yeah. I, I would also say we don't have that many events that we have to do it so like we don't but, you, sorry mostly yes. because i need the production kitchen to now use own the that van yeah. majority of the time and i'm thinking about either put literally putting a freezer a chest freezer in the back and running a power cord to it at night cool. or mounting racks or cameras in there that won't necessarily be completely ideal to get out then let's yeah let's get another van i still think we might need to use that van when it gets totally yeah um, 
I think it's priority because this also goes with the wrap. This also goes with everything. Okay, so um, level one is priority. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Kind of level two. Yeah, it's with that little like one. We'll just say it's also one because it's the same exact thing. Um, business cards isn't as much, but it's easy. We already have them made. Um, I just had to switch the phone. Yeah, they're designed. I just had to switch the phone number from our current phone number to Soda Bar before I printed them because they have Soda Bar in them. Did you print? Are you going to plan on printing the menu you made? Too? Yeah. We don't, but we don't need to print the menu in nice paper or anything. We literally. I don't, I don't even think we need to. Print. Well, I, we're, we want to do thank you cards on this print. Do them all. It's cheap and it'll look nice, I promise you'll love it. Uh, what should, where should we put the menu? Oh, yeah. You, you, if anyone asks, you can put it out on the bar. I think, okay. You could give them to venues. Oh, yeah. And, and just maybe have a more info about our kid. Okay, yeah. I think she could for sure. Okay, let me write that down. Um, like those, have you ever seen those old uh, catering offering things? Yes. Yeah. Similar cardstock. Okay, I'll put two, two. I think those are some of the most important. Dutch Kitchen Hank also, actually, we're gonna put, this is number two, this needs to happen. I need to get them all there. Yeah, and they're just about, after last night's meeting, they're just about ready to receive them and schedule and everything to do. Double leads, that, that's number three. Everything's first priority. I know, for real. These, these are like, all needing to happen. Okay, now, just cause I really wanna write on this whiteboard, am I okay. itching to? Okay. Um, who's doing what? So I'm gonna, I can do most of it. So Except you and I are doing this. I'll, yeah. I'll get the money out and make the purchase. Okay. Um, maybe you can pretty much I handle can all of that. Uh -huh. Can you handle all of this? Yep. Okay. Do you, what else? Do, do you want to look through this? I, I, I have them pretty much done. I just need to go through it one more time and make the quizzes, and then I'm done. That's right. Once I make the quizzes, I'm done. You but I can go through, good? yeah, I can sure. go through one time with you, but I should be fine. Okay. Training, I got. All right, we'll put you down for that. And then, except for the truck training? Yeah, that, that I do need can we go. Can we do that? We should have it just be a set time every week. Every week? Why don't we just do one big one of four people? Yeah. Do you have four people that could potentially be lined up to do it? I want to. Help Ellie get comfortable uh, with that. that yeah. Ashley, Van, okay. Lewin. Isaac? Mm -hmm. Isaac Watts probably, but I'd also feel bad not inviting Josh. Cause okay, let's do those four. Okay. okay. We also, Sophie and Emily could probably do it too. Can you schedule that? Yeah, and I'll let schedule you know that. When? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, but Daniel's scheduling. Okay. Okay. Um, but let's do it this week. Okay. Thursday maybe? We'll plan on, let's plan on one hour. Yeah. Okay. Production kitchen, submit the orders. Do you feel like you have it? Oh, I need to, this is both of us, because I need to set up all the prices. Didn't, didn't you, oh, you just need to finish the pricing. So I'll set the prices, it. I'll go to Zoom, I'll record the screen, and I'll just, I'll just show how to do it. That you cool. can see, you can look at it, and you can give it to Ellie. Okay. So that's mine. Inventory sheet, I'll that's share true. with you, but you'll have to edit it with all the stuff you want. Okay. And then you know how to work for Carl's. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you? Yes. I'll go, yes over, I do. I'll go over that. You want me to go over <laughs> I kinda know how to order from Carl's. Don't so. to, I'll go over this um, zoom for you and Ellie too. Cool. Hey guys, this is how you use our sheet, this is how you plug it into Carl's. Yep. Zoom out to on inventory. And then I can do that fast. Um, leads. When do we want to set up this meeting? Let me text Kennedy. Uh, so hopefully this week, then let's plan on a two-hour meeting for that. Okay. Two-hour meeting. If we could do it late at night or early in the morning, that's when I would perform best, I think. Okay. So that's Ethan, Daniel, and Kenzie. We'll sit down, we'll break through the Facebook ads, not just how to do them, we'll just literally create them. Okay. Or what we could do is we can sit down and be like, all right, we want to build X, Y, Z. We want to do the phone call ones, we're going to target mothers of the brides, we're going to do five others. Then we'll go off and build them. Okay. And then bank account. And then at that point, once we have, a, I would say, once we build what we know we want to build in the platform in Facebook ads, then let's just throw forty-five. Cool. 
So 45 a day, once we get that set up, and then expo. That, I wanna, the, the main things that we're missing is the lighting, and there's just a couple like busy work, but we pretty much got it. Um, so like a design and, and oh, an announcement. And we have the announcements and we need to get the people there. Like people there and the design and we're good. I'll work on the design, I'll email the design, like I was saying that idea. Okay. And then and once then we get I'll probably just that get up. it to you and Kenzie and then we'll you guys post announce. it everywhere. Cool. And then me and Rachel will support from the first page. Okay. Bank right. account. And then Daniel's logistics okay. Okay. Uh, of meeting with Kenzie to figure out all the final plans, developing all that stuff. Do you feel confident about that yeah. stuff? We'll look at it hard next week too. Another yeah. meeting maybe. Bank account is pretty much Ethan. Yep. I just need a card to use or... Let me just get you that. It's literally right here. Okay. I'll take a picture of this right now. Oh, I'm doing the Zoom. Do I need to activate this? Yeah. I'm doing the Zoom, I'm doing the... Do you want me to text these things to you? There's a picture of here. Either one's fine. Okay. Okay. Same deal? Alright, let's keep closing at 30%. <laughs> I know. That's, that's the main thing, is when we get these leads, I'm sure we can't. I'm, I'm like 100% confident in Kenzie and myself. I think Kenzie just went and closed a $5,000 deal. Hypes me up more than anything. Yeah. That's so much revenue. <laughs> wow. So. One of my goals. One of my goals is to be the first entrepreneur ever to be sponsored by Red Bull. <laughs> I think it happened. I feel like it could happen. Yeah. Just for some context, um, we're Rachel is our director of marketing. She's also a part owner of Thirst, of the whole company. So she's basically the number two in the whole company, and she her job is to communicate with the customers. So that basically entails obvious things like running the Instagram, creating all the content, um, but more behind the scenes things like. Managing most Making all of the, the yeah, just everything. She's literally a thirst ninja. She does ton of logistics. She's an operations manager and a marketing manager. She's the best. Anyways, we're gonna go over. Just we've got a million things going on right now because we're opening this store and West Jordan and doing things like we were just talking about and new menu rollout. New menu rollout that's going on right now. We're trying to communicate. Entire company coming up. Yeah. So anyways, we're gonna we're. Filtering through our to-do list and prioritizing stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, do you want to do the same thing as him, or do you have notes you want to specifically dive into? Um. Okay. Let's see. We need to get first and on TV done and a Q and A done and the twenty questions. I need an hour of your week. Okay. But those are all things you want to post first and on TV on Thursday, so? or Wednesday. I did put Thursday, yeah. Okay. So we're talking about direct Jordan. Direct. Yeah. Tell me what it is. Oh, hello. Um, usually when we open a new store or just always basically, especially when we just had our one downtown store, it's really when this started, um, we go to Instagram and we use the search function to search like downtown Salt Lake City, for example, um, for our Salt Lake location. And we will send people a message saying, hey, we noticed you're posting in the area. Really want you to come by and try our shop. Here's a coupon for a free pretzel bike cup or something like that. Um, no spam or anything. We just send them something that is of value to them so that they can stop by our shop and see if they like the experience. Um, so we're going to send out 5,000 of those before we open West Jordan. The More than that. The strategy is 50,000. Yeah. We're going to send out as many as we can before we open West Jordan. What do you think? hand-to-hand -hand combat marketing, like scaling the unscalable types of marketing always have driven the best results for us. Like instead of just boosting one post on your Facebook page, doing an offensive grinding effort, like literally DMing by hand a personal message to 5,000 people, that's been huge success for us, strategies like that. And they're not copy and paste either. There's a 
body text that's copy and paste that we always put, if it's like a dog account, we always put like. And the thing is, it's not spam. No. It's like, it's we're, we're just saying hi, we're part of the community. We're not like, want to collab, like, you want to do thingies. Yeah. It's like, literally, we are actually in your community. We actually will give you a free thing that's worth five bucks if you come check out our business. Like, I think it's good. Yeah. Can I do two minutes on underground marketing real quick? Yeah. What we need. Okay, so. Okay. So we need Ohio slash profile setup. We need final menu for shot list. Shot a nail list. in this chair. I'm just wrecked my leggings. I'm gonna reach out to five influencers to invite them to try it. And this underground marketing, not logistics. Yeah. We'll get nice story highlights of like how how to order products available from underground. Yeah. We need to get a link tree up for a menu. And like order like if they click the link to like Grubhub, it'll probably just take them to their app. If they have the Grubhub app or it'll take them to Grubhub online. So we'll get a link tree in the bio of the underground Instagram. Yeah. With the underground menu and then ordering platforms. Or should we have it right to online order? Where are you? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. No, like through our website. You know, you, just, you can do the app or through our website. Same thing. Yeah. But yeah. aren't we doing like drug hugging? That's like, I'm not lying. Kate is like, it's hard to have like a camera, and I totally spilled my drink. <laughs> yeah, you're like, 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 the king of distraction. I'm dying to my into a lynch tree. Thank you, God. I'm sorry. Like, you're currently in marinara sauce over it. So. One of the buttons could just be order now. Yeah. Order now. And, and then and the thing is, our menu, which we'll just go. I see your menu. Yeah. But then but the other button. The only thing be. is, I don't want to drive them to DoorDash at all. But isn't this just pick up? We're not doing delivery. Yeah. Oh, because of. Maybe it creates into our. Okay. But okay, I am gonna cancel. Back. I'm gonna cancel the DoorDash at the store, and I'm just to make any inventory all and of them, or just DoorDash. Yep. Fine. Just to make inventory and operations cleaner, and move that here. So this place will do DoorDash exclusively. So it will be better too. So, okay. Do you want to set this up? This page yeah. up. Yeah. You, you'll kind of need this first, I guess. So I'll finalize the menu. And then give you a shot list of Email. each of the products that I need. Yes. Okay. And Nico then, and I will get those. Okay. So this Rachel takes all those. Um, I'll help write the bio in this. Perfect. That is not my strong suit. And what highlights should we have over there? Menu. How to Menu, how to access how the to order specials maybe if we want to do like order. a month or like I don't know or like. Recommended. We, could, we, we should do one that's like how it works or what is underground or something like that. Yes, definitely. So you can see like where their food is made. That's like, oh, that's the problem I have with Mr. Beast Burger. I don't know if my burger was made at like Hurry in a Hurry, I <laughs> Hop, <Curry>. like, no, <laughs> that was funny. Like, like, this is how, like how, I want to see how it like, works. yeah, clean kitchen. Or just like, we're the production kitchen that makes all the storage. Why can't we make? The items we have here at the stores, yeah, because we don't have the time. But here we got a cool menu, yeah. some fun like that. Then, <laughs> then menu, yeah. Then location <laughs> access or something, something like that. They can pick up, right? Yeah. So I can pick up delivery. Okay, pick up delivery. And any other link? Online ordering, is there going to be an order minimum or did we cancel? Order? No minimum. Yeah. Basically, it'll be full location. They we should can, maybe they do can like pick up a 44 hour That's yeah. what I was thinking for this one. Okay, okay. Like yeah, yeah, to. I can definitely do that. Because it's like kind of a weird building, but we'll have better signs. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, that's the link tree, so if you'll at least get those. And on this app, we're going to have an I'm here button, right? Because we don't want them coming in to that door. as a yeah, we'll have code on it. Yeah, they won't come in. Okay. okay how's that going to work with, like, DoorDash, too? They'll just knock or what? They'll, we'll probably put up a sign, call this number on your next call. Yeah. So I'll work on this. I'll work on the fi finalizing the menu. Then you'll work on that shot list for me. Mm -hmm. And then I'll reach out to these people and tell them what it is and get them on. On and stuff to come. Good. Yeah, and then I'm doing the catering Instagram tonight as well, so they can get traffic there. We don't want to drive traffic there when it's empty. Yes. The other thing is two more things is um, what about do any more? I just need this another scoop shop. Mm hmm. Can we replace that with? Yeah, it's really wants it. Yeah. Can we just do the scoop and there's product? Yeah. Because I have their cups already and we have ice cream. Oh. Right. We have no white walls there. I'm never going to be there. Okay, we might good. honestly have to get a backdrop there. Sounds good. Okay. It'd be sick to like um, form a relationship with that studio that's next door. Okay, you feeling good? Anything else you need from me for this week? Um, right now? Not right now, but probably later this week. We'll probably have to meet again. Sweet, that's yeah, marketing. Okay. Uh, well, that's yours, sir. Nice. I've been so like head down, focused on operations that I haven't been as offensive as I've wanted to. I mean, like. Sorry. Making a lot of content and coming up with new strategies and just focusing on bringing customers to the door. I've more been focusing on the operational side of it. And so when I do get to sync up with Rachel, which is rare, it's good because we can talk strategy. But really, she's got a good system of posting content that is valuable to our community. And that in of itself is just completely... I mean, we put, we've made a system of how to make exciting, fresh, new content for her. Every weekend we do a feature. We do like business highlights. We do all these different products and specials. So Rachel's job is really to communicate what we're doing. One of the biggest problems I think that, or at least in my opinion, is a mistake of a strategy is to sometimes look for something to add to their menu or that next campaign or idea that you're going to do when really all you got to do is communicate what you're already doing better which it means good content becoming more popular on platforms that we all know are popular which is basically Instagram one thing yeah and that but like one thing I think is stupid is people talk about Instagram like you can't do it anymore like you can't, you can't build a profile on Instagram anymore the like algorithm is dead it's like sure maybe it's not easy to organically grow fast it's honestly easier for a local business though yeah, because it's you like find we, local people in the community. It's harder for, I feel like now it's harder for like big and big people that want to be like big worldwide influencers and worldwide companies to grow on Instagram because they don't know where to start or like who to, you know, who to collaborate with. It's easy being a local business on Instagram. Yeah, I agree. And it's like people who say that, I just think it's silly because we still, I would argue that our number one driver of business at all times is our Instagram page for sure because. It's less of like an advertising piece, it's more just a communication channel we have with the customers. So that's Rachel's pretty much whole job. So what you're saying is that I'm the number one driver of all sales then? Yes, <laughs> exactly. Okay, Cade, let's tell them what you do. Oh, Cade. Never mind. Cade is, Cade started on, Cade just started up working at our downtown store, yeah. right? And right when he was a little nubby 14 year old, were you 14 or 15? 15. Nubby? <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> he's just a little now, 14 year old. Now, now he's 18, right? Yeah, I'm 18 now, yeah. But you since became the manager of our Vivint Smart Home Arena, the Jazz Arena location. Then that got shut down because of COVID. Yeah. Then he started hanging out in the office with me and Rachel and helping us with everything. Now he since kind of manages our whole online store, which is not it's a not huge crazy, store right now. But, but mostly right now, he's we just started being open at the Jazz Arena for all the games and it's going better than expected with some like COVID safe 
strategies that we have. So, how'd it go last night? Tell me. Uh, it was good. We did like 105 orders. Uh, we were super busy at halftime, so it was really fun. Uh, yeah. I don't know monetarily what that is, but it's the most we've done like order numbers. Since COVID? Since COVID, yeah. Because there's only, there's only 38, 3,500 people in the entire arena. So we got like one thirty fifth of them yeah. to come visit us. Um, yeah, they switched to cashless completely, so they don't take cash at the arena. They don't. Yeah. Even we don't. We don't even like take their orders. It's all online. So they order on an app, and then they and then they just come up to the front, and we have their order ready for them. So we can't like set cards or anything like that. Yeah. I just hired two general managers, which are the biggest position in my company, one for Mill Creek and one for downtown, uh, because my downtown manager is moving to West Jordan manager, and my Mill Creek manager is moving to be my operations manager, so just texting them a little bit about their training schedule, and then we're going to head off out to West Jordan, actually at our new store, where we're gonna be doing some orientations for the new team that we just hired. We're not open there yet, but we're trying to get open by next Saturday for our grand opening party. So. You guys, really quick, um, if you are interested in a management position, you guys know Cade from Thirst, he's gonna be transitioning out of the Vivint manager position over the next little bit. So we're looking for someone to step into that role. It's not necessarily a full-time, all-year-long gig, but it would come with a pay raise and a lot more responsibility, and you get to hang out and go to all the jazz games that are at home, so it's pretty sick. Let me know if you're interested. We use Snapchat for the main communication pretty much in the company, mostly because it's the fastest and quickest and honestly most effective. Like When people hear that we use Snap, they think it's kind of silly or it's like just for kids, but it's literally, in my opinion, other than the fact that it goes away, one of the best like business tools to use in the company. They get the reward. Okay, see you guys. What you could do is you could put on everyone who signs up, put like a thirst cup emoji. Remember the loyalty idea I want to do on Snapchat? It's basically like a free text list because it goes directly to somebody's inbox. I had it literally like a year ago. We've been trying to hack or Think Snapchat, of an idea to in market on Snapchat, but Rachel has an idea. Okay, basically, I want to be like, you know, like teenagers send like Snapchat streaks. They send one Snapchat to each other a day, and Snapchat puts a number next to to their name saying like how long your streak with them is. It can be like mm -hmm. 43 days, 45 days, all those. So, I want to start a thirst Snapchat account. Um, and before it wasn't possible because if we got like 10,000 friends on Snapchat, I could not manually go click through everyone and send them a streak. But now there's a shortcuts button on Snapchat that you can send it to everyone on. So for our wow. Snapchat streaks, we're gonna post on our story all the time on Snapchat story about our new products and stuff, free marketing, another free marketing tool. We're gonna have streaks with people. And it's just a touch point, you know? It's brilliant. Like they saw our, us on Snapchat too. Yes. Um, so for their streaks, they send us a Snapchat every day, we send them a Snapchat. Our Snapchats are gonna be like, hey guys, don't forget, we have fresh oranges to like now on our menu. Or like, guys, we just started pretzel dunk cups. Just another way to get, to communicate to the customers. If they get a five day streak, they can get a free 60 ounce soda, 20 day streak, 20% off their order that day. 40 day streak, free drink or something like that. So we'll have like points where they can earn free menu items. And it's huge. completely Are you gonna work on it this free. week? Yes, I'm gonna go set up the account right now, and then mm -hmm. can I hire Kate? Sure. Literally, we're gonna start, and that's the A-frame we can put out. Do it. That we were having Deidre do for Ooh, the email list. We can do an A-frame instead for Snapchat. Do it. It's literally all free. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I'm so excited. Right, see you later. Okay, bye. Sorry to interrupt. There you go. <laughs> Okay, so we are here at the West Jordan location. We're, let's see, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. So a little less than two weeks out of our grand opening party, which is next Saturday night. Um, but we were just talking to them about where we're gonna paint the lines for the drive-through because one of our biggest problems at first is having too many people stacked up in line and then having problems with the city. So we're just trying to get that really squared away before we open up. Alright, so
So we are here. This is the West Jordan store. It's going to be drive through only. You can't come in here. And it was not like this before. There was a big bar in the middle here. We ran all kinds of power. We've got just our oven in right now. The rest of the equipment's coming tomorrow. But we do have our soda machines. We've got all our coolers in. But uh, yeah, this is basically the early scenes. This week it'll basically turn into a what will look like a first kitchen. But upstairs is the offices. Awesome. Well, perfect timing. This is our owner, Ethan. How's everyone going? Great. Well, we're, uh, we're going to film this. Is that cool? <laughs> cool. Sweet. Why don't you listen? Okay, awesome. Probably going to work while you do it. Okay, the first thing, we're going to put you over here because there's a gap. Not bad. 10? Uh, we have some coming at 4 30 as well. Jordan store. Okay, two things to know about our owner. He sings randomly. It's really great. We love it. He sings. What's my name? <laughs> Lindsay Dabrilla. Always. It's not bad, huh? And then also, not you bad. guys will all get a nickname. Maybe from him. Maybe can from we go? Can we do the nickname exercise really quick before we get started? Go for it. All right, just because I don't know anyone, if we could go name and if you've ever had a nickname and you want to continue to claim it, that's perfect. Say that one. If not, say your dream nickname slash what you want your nickname to be. My name is Ethan from Thirst. That's pretty much my name and my nickname. You're up. Uh, my name is Ken Sully and I like to go by Kate. Kate? Is it Ken Sully? Ken Sully. Let's call you Kate. Yeah. Do you have any like <laughs> fun nicknames though that's not like a normal human's name? Like based on something funny you did or something? <laughs> You'll do something, we'll, we'll nickname you. Okay. Um, my name's Emery, and I don't have a nickname either, but I'll try to think of one. <laughs> um, my name is Emma. A lot of people, because of my last name, they call me Cooch. Or Coach. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't need to use that here. So. At the Milk Cooch store when it opened, we did the same thing, and this girl was like, Oh yeah, I play hook on um, like some sport. Is that sport? Like what? lacrosse. Lacrosse, yeah. Or, and she's like, my friends call me Hooker, so <laughs> it's a perfect nickname. Oh, okay. I didn't know her real name until way after I knew her nickname. <laughs> okay, you're up. My name's Taylor, and I don't have a nickname, but I want one. I want a cool one. T money. There we go. Oh, I love it. Oh, <laughs> that's the only money one allows here. Okay. Um, okay. I'm Savannah, but I've never had a nickname. Never. Never. Like a cool nickname. What do you do for fun? Um, theater, film. That camera is so sexy. I'm like <laughs> drooling over it. <laughs> but I All really right, love we'll, we'll come up with something. Okay. Okay. I'll do something. okay. I'm Emily, and I don't really have a cool nickname. Nah. Either. What's your favorite thing to do? I play lacrosse. Okay. We're not calling you. <laughs> 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 I'm Benjamin, and people, some people have called me Jambles in the past. Jambles? Yeah. I like that. That's <laughs> no, welcome, Jambles. Um, I'm Claire. Some people have called me, well, some people have said, Houston, we have a problem around me because of my last name. So. <laughs> What's your last name? Houston. Oh. <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. All right, I like it. I'm Don. Uh, just, they call me Donnie, but it's not really that cool. Donnie. I see, I like Donnie, though. Yeah. Donnie. That's nice. Uh, my name is Bryson, and I've never really had a nickname of Nothing. Me. What's your favorite food? Um, pizza. Mostly. I also like pizza. <laughs> What's your favorite kind of pizza? Uh, just cheese pizza. Yes. You like Domino's? Yeah. You guys are going to be best friends. Domino. This guy's Domino. <laughs> no one. All right, anyways, um, I'm pumped to be here. My name is Ethan, like I said. I am not going to stay for the whole thing, but I want to chime in for like the next 30 minutes. You want to say stuff for the next No, minute? I'll just oh, I'll, I'll participate for the next 30 okay. minutes, then we throw. His screen as well, but there's a little chart, and it says, it just goes through each of the, uh, each of the steps or certifications or whatever. Um, I think Ethan's, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. Okay. okay. So basically how it works is you're here today for orientation. After orientation, you're going to do the brand certification like we're talking about, which I'll go through with you. And that's basically what Thirst is, what we're all about, what makes us different from our competitors, 
everything about Thirst and the brand, that's what the brand certification is. Then you have to do the beverage one that she was talking about. Um, beverage is how to make drinks, the core practice skill of an employee at Thirst. Once you do that one, you can advance to different positions in the shop by completing certifications in trainable upon your own time. So if you want to get a raise and be qualified to work the different shifts in the shop, you can do that on your own time um, and get those raises. So we have the beverage certification. Once you're done with that, you start on the shop with at 10 bucks an hour. If you want to become pretzel certified to work the pretzel shift, which makes all of our pretzel bites, that's, you get a 50 cent raise. If you want to become customer and POS certified, which is working the window and interacting with customers, taking their orders out on the line, which is the most important thing, we give a whole dollar raise for that one. So if you complete that one, that's the most important one, it's the longest training, it's the hardest to pass off, you get a whole dollar raise. And then if you do the beignet certifications, it's basically how to rise, fry, and top fresh beignets made to order. Um, so you complete the certifications, then you can be live on the schedule. So it's a, as fast as you guys want to advance, you can do it. Um, so that basically takes us into the uh, brand certification, right? Oh, do you want me to go through the rest of the stuff on orientation, actually? Oh, orientation's going to be longer than you're expecting. Okay. You want to go through brand, then? Mm, do you want me to go through all of orientation? I'll go through brand, and then you can do that after I go. Okay, so I'll go through the brand booklet with you guys. The first one is a big, typically, like she was saying, we don't do it in big groups, and so we have you guys actually go through the training wheel. But since we're all here, you would watch this big video of my face, which basically is a message from me saying that we're really excited you guys are here, and basically the whole strategy of this company is to provide a good experience. We're not, our success is not predicated on a specific product. We're not famous for the pizzas we make, or although we have good pretzels and beignets and things, we're really not, we're really not banking on a specific product, we're actually, in fact, most of our products are cheaper and more accessible and you don't have to wait in line if you go to one of our competitors or to a gas station. Really what we're selling is a whole customer experience. So there's a bunch of stuff that kind of make up an experience, but think about all the things that are a sense to you that makes up an experience. What you see, what you hear, the way someone looks at you, the thing that you taste, things that you smell, things that you're, the music that you're hearing, it all comes into an experience that they have here. And so that's really what we're doing. Customer service, being a fun, interactive brand on communication platforms that people are actually on, which is social media. Um, and just providing an experience when they're here that they're like, wow, holy crap, that was insane. And so the whole purpose of the first video is just to let you guys know yeah, we have really good beignets, really good pretzels and drinks, but what we're trying to sell is an experience. We're an experience over everything. We're customer service over everything. Um, but the way that we get there, so that's what we want, is to have this amazing experience. The way that we get there, the most, most companies like to say that cliche line of like, the customer is always right. You guys have probably always heard. Although we are extremely grateful for the customers, we don't think that they're always right first. We don't think that the customer comes first every time. Because really, there is no experience to give to the customer without the team. And so it's our highest level strategy is the team comes first and the customers come second. Because if you guys are happy, then you're providing the best possible experience for the customers. A good example I always give is if you go to Burger King at like 10 p.m., the person that opens the window usually looks like they hate their life, right? <laughs> it's a bad experience for everyone, they're rude. If that person, now compare that to Chick-fil-A's employees, how happy and excited they are, no matter what the hour or what time you come in or how big your order is, that's because the employees are excited to be at work, they don't hate their job, they're not getting paid minimum wage. And the same idea is what we're doing here. Is it's almost like we're being selfless by putting you guys first, because selfishly, we want you to provide an amazing experience. So that is really the whole higher level strategy of the company is make a good culture, make things like a clear program of how you guys can advance and get paid more in the company and provide more value to you guys so that in turn, you'll provide that thing that makes us different than 
all our competitors, which is really good customer service, just providing a really good experience. And so that's basically what that video is, is we provide a good experience and that's what we're selling. And we do that by having a happy, fun team and environment. Um, the next thing on brand, yeah, so that's Ethan says hello. The next thing on the brand is, I call it our little secret. Our little secret is that you can get our drinks at Maverick for cheaper and you usually don't have to wait in line every time. What are we selling is an experience. It's, it's not about a singular product. If it was about the soda, then there's way too many people in this game and there's people that are way more conveniently and cheaper priced. We're literally higher priced than all of our competitors. We're completely banking on providing this unforgettable, amazing experience. Um, so that's the little secret, is you are so cheaper. What does the brand stand for? The brand stands for happiness. The tagline of Thirst is Thirst, Happy Drinks and Treats. Everything we do has is branded, is centered around happiness. One of the things we say a lot is, and that comes up later in the brand certification, is positivity is infectious, AKA happiness is infectious. Like, if I'm a really happy, optimistic dude, and I believe everything in the company works from the top down. That's If the top management, the top people guiding the company are positive, optimistic, happy, then everyone else underneath follows that. And so happiness over everything, mostly because it's infectious to the whole team and a happy team, again, provides an amazing experience. So that's basically what the brand means. Next is company core values. We circle back to these during team meetings and when we're putting messages out and navigating the business. First is gratitude. One of the things I think is the hardest thing to get a team to do is to not be bothered when there's 50 cars in line that they have to go serve, to actually get to a place in their mind where they're grateful for the customers. Because really, none of us would be sitting here without the customers being willing to spend their money on us. And so we talk about it a lot, like, yeah, you have to, go run 50 more cars and take all their orders, but they've probably been waiting for 50 cars in line, and they probably could have got this cheaper somewhere else, and they probably X, Y, Z for us, and so it's just a gratitude thing, like gratitude over everything, that provides a good experience for the customers. When you're actually grateful for them and you can get a place in your mind when you start thinking like that, then you're like, wow, like, I actually should have a welcoming tone in my voice. I actually should be happy with whatever they order from me and not bothered when their order's big. And so gratitude for the customers is number one when it comes to core values. Number two is like I was saying, positivity is infectious. There's no other way to get a team to always answer the window like, hi, welcome to Paris, how are you? In the happiest tone ever, other than making that the norm in the culture that you're working in. And that's really what we did. Like, when the company started five years ago, I worked every shift by myself, pretty much, for the first couple years. But every time I did it, I answered the window in a really happy tone. And whenever I was in the shop, I was optimistic and happy to my team that was around. And it's infectious to the rest of the team. And I've done that, I do that a ton with my managers. And it's their job to push that down below them. But positivity is infectious is definitely one of our three core values. Third is what we started with, which is the customer is not always right. Like we're genuinely here and excited to have you guys here and we want to make a good experience for you. Obviously understand that this job probably isn't the permanent career uh, solution for all of you, but we're all here for a reason, whatever that may be. If you're here for just something to do, if you're here for the money, if you're here for a social life, like whatever it may be, we might as well get value out of it while we're all here. And so, uh, the customer's not always right, the team's always right, it'll come before everything. Like, you'll soon find out that we do things other companies don't do. We invest heavily in our team and making sure that the culture's good because really it ultimately translates to how we're providing experience to the customer. So those are our three main core values and we'll circle back to them quite often. Um, next is the brand signatures. Brand signatures, the best way I can describe it is My Pleasure from Chick-fil-A. You guys know My Pleasure? Brand signatures to me are things that you, as a brand, are remembered by. So when you think of My Pleasure, you always think of Chick-fil-A. When you think of Thirst, our number one brand signature that's evolved over the years is Have a Happy Day. 
Have a happy day is our, always our departure line. Have a happy morning, have a happy afternoon, have a happy night, whatever it is. That's always the departure line. Lindsay will get into that and more of the training stuff. But that's number one. Brand signature is have a happy day. Number two is welcome to Thirst plus an original greeting. One of the things that we've identified to be a key part of the experience is the initial welcome and interaction with the customer. And so first welcome them to Thirst, but then also throwing in a non-scripted original greeting. How are you guys doing tonight? Oh, good to see you guys. What are you guys up to? Some type of original greeting, it completely changed the whole experience. It went from, this was a business transaction that they wanted my money, to, oh, this person's actually genuinely asking me about something in my life. And so uh, that's one of our brand signatures. It's less of a tangible like signature line, but more of a key part of the experience. Last one, the happy formula. Happy formula we talk about a lot because it's basically a way to keep things positive and uh, happy in the stores and when we're talking and communicating with customers. Happy formula is basically a way to say bad news, to deliver bad news with an optimistic angle. <laughs> AKA, if the customer comes in and we're so excited to get the new fresh baked chocolate chip cookies, but we actually ran out 10 minutes before, instead of just saying, oh, we're, we're out, sorry guys, it's over. Then it, the complete experience was completely negative. It went down and never came back up. The happy formula is to basically take the bad news and deliver it in a positive way. So the formula to do it is basically you state the bad news, whatever it is. Do you guys have banana puree? Do you have any chocolate chips? Are you still doing cinnamon rolls in the morning? Well, all the answers would be no. First, you state the bad news. Hey, look, we're not doing cinnamon rolls in the morning anymore. Next part of the formula is but something positive. So say the bad news, but something positive. Hey, we're not doing cinnamon rolls anymore, but we do bake fresh chocolate chips in the morning and they come out right around right now. And they're my favorite thing on the menu. The full formula is state the bad news, counter it with something positive, plus some way you can get excited about it. So, hey, we're actually out of chocolate chip cookies, but we do have soft pretzel bites. My favorite is the Parmesan pretzel bites with the marinara donut cup. It's a complete way to not only reroute it to positive, but also give them a reason and show them a reason why it's validated and you can be excited about it. So it completely reroutes the thing. We'll practice it more in the training and in team meetings as we go on. But the happy formula is basically a way that uh, we can talk to the customers in a more optimistic way. What separates us from our competitors? This is the last one of brand signatures. This one's like really important because no question one of the top things that people will come and say is, oh wait, you guys are like Swig, right? It's like a number one line. Or, oh, is this like that food's place that was by my house? And it's like, oh yeah. It's like a very awkward thing to say. And so we like to just, in a in context like this, in training and orientation, literally just talk exactly about what the differences are, what angle we're trying to take, and exactly what we're doing. Um, first off, we're separating ourselves in two ways. First off is the experience, and this one trumps everything. No matter what our product is, we're still beating them because of what we're doing as a brand to be interactive, communicate with our customers, be really nice, exciting for them to leave and feel really excited about what just happened, post an Instagram for the brand to reply and repost them. Like it's just, it's a million different factors that come into caring about the customer and providing a good experience for them. But number two is our products on our menu. We're really right now focusing on trying to cross the border from being a soda shop with cold cookies that's a convenient stop for a Diet Coke to more of a place where you can get a full experience and a meal out of um, the drive through And so we did things like add soft pretzel bites. We just added beignets full time on the menu. We make them full time every day, all day. We make soft pretzel bites fresh all, every day, all day. We introduce some things like combos, which are a combo of different products to help people more buy a meal than just one drink. We don't want people waiting 50 cars deep in line to buy one $2 soda. It doesn't play out very well. And so that's kind of our angle. Yeah, we're, first off, it's very clear that we're trying harder to be more popular and provide a better experience. That's number one. But number two is we're taking an angle that 
really think gets us more market share instead of just being a place for people who love soda, and that's pretty much it, we're now taking an angle of, even if you have never drank soda in your life and don't want to, this is still, you can still have an amazing experience at Thirst with pretzels, beignets, water mixers, all these different kinds of non-soda options. So we think it grabs us more market share, appeals to way more customers, and uh, it's kind of the master plan. So that's about the brands, a little bit about Thirst. I want to take off in a minute. Lindsay's probably going to go through more logistical stuff, but I'm excited to hang out with you guys during trainings and uh, teach you a little bit. So let me know if you guys have anything. Talked about. If you guys want any more See details later. Talk to you soon. I feel like I've talked a novel and a half today. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like every day though.